Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're back with our low-cost Intel PC build. This is a dual-core i3 Skylake chip paired with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And what we're going to do in this video is take a look at that GPU that we got installed there. That is a PNY 1050Ti card, and it sells for about $150. So you'll see what an additional $150 will bring you uh, on this low-cost PC insofar as performance is concerned, uh, in particular gaming performance, because we saw that the Intel chip on its own uh, doesn't do all that great with gaming, but we'll see what a small investment here might make to improve the situation for you. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, this GPU came in free of charge from PNY. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So, uh, the GPU here has four gigabytes of video RAM. Its core uh, speed is 1,366, and its boost clock uh, runs at 1,480 megahertz. I believe they slightly overclock these devices here. Now what we're going to do is pop into all the games that we tried in the last video. So definitely check out that video to get some context. We'll also run some benchmarks that we ran in the last video also uh, to see exactly what we'll get when we put this $150 card in uh, to boost our graphical performance. So let's start off with Minecraft. Now you'll recall that Minecraft was running at about 120 frames per second on the processor on its own. Uh, and now we're seeing frame rates well above 600 frames per second and often well above 700 frames per second. So uh, just a very quick $150 installation and some drivers and you can see the kind of performance gains you will get uh, in low impact games here like Minecraft. So definitely a, a substantial boost, uh, more of a boost than you'll probably need with uh, whatever monitor you have. But if you are looking at maybe getting a, a 144p monitor for your uh, for your gaming computer here, I think you can definitely safely play Minecraft at that frame rate and still have plenty of room to spare. All right, so now we're going to take a look at Rocket League, and these are the same settings we had on this machine before when we were just running with the Intel chip by itself. We were getting about maybe 20 to 25 frames per second running the game on that uh, processor on its own, and now we're seeing frame rates at about 134 to 146 here, uh, playing the same game with the same settings on the same computer. So you can really see here uh, what a big difference a GPU makes, uh, even an inexpensive one, uh, on something that you're building for uh, gameplay purposes here. So much better than you get out of a game console, out of a uh, pretty inexpensive setup overall. All right, so here we are in Counter-Strike Go, and what I did here was run it in the exact same settings we were running in the last video when we just had the Intel chip running by itself. And you can see here we're getting uh, anywhere from 180 to 230 frames per second as we're moving around here. So a significant uh, increase in performance with the exact same settings that we had before. Uh, so you can really see again the difference that a GPU makes. And what you'll probably want to do here is uh, go into the NVIDIA Experience software and have it tailor make your uh, settings uh, for your GPU specifically. And that will uh, improve visual quality and also give you decent frame rate. Because although it's cool to get you know, 100, 150, 200 frames per second in a game, if your monitor is only a 60 hertz monitor, uh, you're not going to really see a benefit of that frame rate beyond 60. So you could definitely turn up the image quality and get things looking nicer uh, with a decent, very playable frame rate. I also ran Grand Theft Auto 5 using the recommended settings from the GeForce Experience app. You can see what those settings are here. And uh, we got much better frame rates than we did when we did not have a GPU installed at all. So before the GPU, we were getting maybe 10 frames per second on that game. Uh, now we're very comfortably at or above 60 frames per second in uh, many portions of Grand Theft Auto 5. That game really has a lot of variety to it insofar as its complexity is concerned. So there are parts of the game that will run uh, in the 50s and other parts that might run in the 70s or 80s or so, uh, but I was very impressed to see that uh, just a $150 investment on this low-cost PC uh, gave us a very playable frame rate on a pretty demanding game. Pretty cool stuff. And I was also curious to see if we might be able to make this a VR PC. It does uh, consider itself capable, but not quite ready uh, based on the Steam VR performance test. So I think we'll want to go up to a 1060 GPU uh, to be able to make this a VR machine. And I also ran the Time Spy benchmark, which is very demanding and runs in DirectX 12. We got a score, as you can see here, of 2,451. And what I intend to do with this test is compare uh, how this computer does with a 1050 Ti uh, to how it might do 
do with a 1060 and a 1070 graphics card uh, installed onto the motherboard there. I've got those two cards over there from PNY. Uh, so in our next video, we're going to look at the performance of both of those cards against this one and see what uh, kind of incremental improvements you'll see as you upgrade to faster graphics cards. Remember, we're starting off with a, a pretty low-end PC here, so we'll see if there's a point in which it doesn't make sense to keep upgrading uh, because you might hit the, uh, the, the wall on the CPU speed there. One other thing to note here is the box that it comes in, and I wanted to uh, just show you that if you do have a PC that lacks a particular uh, power port on your power supply, you might be able to make this work anyhow. So I dug deep into the box here, uh, and at the bottom of the box was this little connector here that uh, will give you the ability, let me pull up my other camera here, uh, that will give you the ability to plug in these two Molex connectors here and uh, get the connector you need to get that GPU powered. Now PNY, I believe, also has a mini version of this same GPU. I don't think it's overclocked, but it costs about the same, and it can be slot powered also. So if you have a very small case, uh, you might be able to get that mini GPU working and see uh, pretty much similar performance to what we saw here. This one's going to be slightly faster because it comes overclocked, but uh, you do have options on other low-end PCs, provided they have that uh, PCI X16 slot on board, uh, and they have a power supply of 300 watts or better to power it. So we're going to come back now with this in our next video to see how this same motherboard and processor performs with faster GPUs. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.